Hi, my name is Mike Houston. I'm a product line manager with Bot Stopper in charge of commercial dimming. I want to talk to you a little bit today about digital lighting management and the dimming and daylighting functions that we've got built in. All right, so what are the products we have? We have the LMLS 400 and the LMLS 500. You'll see on the screen, the LMLS 400 is our closed loop photo cell for digital lighting management. These photo cells have just one RJ45 port on the side for connection to the Cat5B cable. You can plug it in anywhere. It's free topology, so you can plug it into a sensor, a switch, a room controller, doesn't matter. The LMLS 400, we recommend for single zone application per sensor. Now, you can have more than one of these in a room controlling different loads. We just bind it to one load or another, but we only want to control one load with it because of that, what I talked about, that light level fighting kind of thing. The other huge advantage of using this closed loop photo sensor in a small office or a, a situation like that, it's really powerful. It can do on off, bi level, tri level, or dimming. The strategy is selected using the LMCT100, so you have to pick the room controller to match what your strategy is. If it's on off only, you can use the on off room controller. If you're going to do dimming, you'll need to pick a dimming room controller and then set the photo cell accordingly. But the other thing I really like with the 400, the LMLS 400, is it's self calibrating. Out of the box, you plug it in, it starts to work. Okay? It's going to be very conservative at that point. It's not going to be aggressive daylight harvesting because it has a predefined algorithm that we assume that you're in a, a fairly typical space that you want between 35 and 50 foot candles, and it will start working. There's also self-configuring out of the box, but if you want to get a little tighter, we can commission the thing really simply by taking a, a really specialized tool, a bent paper clip, and poking this tool into the hole in the center of that, of that photo cell and holding it for a couple of seconds, and it will go into its auto commissioning routine. And basically what it does is it'll warm up the lights for a couple of minutes, turn them on and off eight times, 30 seconds apart, and what it's doing is it's measuring how much light do I see with Natural, with electric light, how much without? How much with electric light, how much without? So it develops a daylight ratio and it knows then how much the electric lights is contributing to the overall light level of the space. Okay? So that's really great. All you have to do is push a paper clip in and the thing commissions itself. If that's still not tight enough for you or aggressive enough for you, you can always take the LMCT100 and give it some different set points. Okay? You don't have to recommission the whole thing, just change the set point if you want to. So the LMLS 500, this is the open loop photo cell, and this is a really powerful photo cell also. You can do up to three zo dimming zones per sensor, or three on-off zones per sensor. That's really huge. So this is where we've got you know, a big wall of windows, and we have three rows of light fixtures, and we want each to dim or switch separately and independently based on the, on the natural light that's coming in. So the open loop photo sensor is looking out the window. We've used our foot candle meter, light meter, to tell it what kind of light we're getting on the, the work surface, and then we adjust it accordingly, and then the photo cell takes over and knows how to adjust those rows appropriately to keep the light level where we are at our target. It will also do on-off, bi-level, tri-level, or dimming, and the really unique thing is if you're doing a three-zone or a multi-zone daylighting with this, you can have one zone be on-off and two zones be dimming. So the zone closest to the window that's getting a ton of light, you can make it on-off and then make the other two dimming so that nobody notices. Okay, it's a really, really good strategy. You know, these charts and graphs are sometimes really confusing and overwhelming, but this one I thought was really powerful, so I really felt like it was important to put up here. What we're going to show you here is called the spectral response of the human eye. Big word, basically what it means, what is the, the frequency of light that our eye sees? If you look at the chart, anything to the left of that curve is infrared light. We don't see that. Okay? Everything to the right of that curve is ultraviolet. We don't see that light either. What I'm going to put up here next are six manufacturers, and I'll say six major manufacturers of photocells and their spectral response curves. These are not ours. We didn't produce these. They produced them. We just took the liberty to put them on the chart. Okay? Now, the important thing to kind of look at here is everybody's kind of all over the board here, if you're noticing. Let's take the real outlier. See the guy to the far right on this chart? So at some particular point, right above that 800 nanometer wavelength, you take that line and go straight up, you'll see at some point he's reading 1.0. Let's call that, oh, 100 foot candles. 
So he's reading 100 foot candles. As you move down that line and see that dotted line, which is the spectral response of the human eye, you'll see when that photo cell is reading 100 foot candles, the human eye is only seeing just over 60. So my eye might say I need more light. That photo cell says you need less light. It might be dimming. To me, that's kind of a problem. I'll now show you what watt stopper's curve is. Okay, so there we are highlighted. Now, I'll be the first to admit, we're not perfect, but we're really close. We have the same shape of the curve of the human eye spectral response. We're just shifted a tad to the left. And you know, I'm not an engineer, but it seems to me, all you gotta do is move that to the right, just three quarters of an inch, and we got it nailed. They tell me it's not quite as easy as that, but we'll see. But actually, if you look at our curve, when we're measuring 100 foot candles, we're seeing some infrared, the human eye's not. But at that same point in the curve, if you come down that point, you'll see your human eye's seeing 98.5 foot candles. We think that's as close as it gets. And if you look at those other spectral response curves, hopefully you'll agree. The, the basic of that is our daylight sensors see the way your eye sees. And I think that's really important. So what can the remote configuration tool, the LOCT100, do for you with daylighting? You know, I've already shown you how the LMLS 400 can auto commission itself. Well, you can use this to change a set point. I'll show you some of the features that this thing has that are particular to daylighting. You can commission photo sensors and adjust parameters. The open loop photo sensors have to be commissioned because you have to have a light meter in the space. But using the LMCT100, we're going to make it really easy for you to commission those. It'll basically tell you things like put your photo, put your light meter in zone one and tell me what the reading is. I'll punch in the reading. Put it in zone two, tell me what the reading is. Then it does all the math for you and figures out how much it has to raise or lower to keep the light level, the target light level consistent. So if you look up here, what you'll see in the daylighting menus, you can read the daylight level at the sensor, or the light level at the sensor. So you can use the LMCT100 to query the sensor and say, what are you seeing? And if you're pointing at an open loop sensor that you think is pointed out the window, and it says, I'm seeing zero, uh, 0, 0. I'm seeing nothing. Well, it could be that that photo cell got mounted backwards and is really pointing at a column, seeing nothing. How would you know that from 12 feet, 20 foot height without having this LMCT? You'd have to go up on a ladder. So that's a powerful feature. It's a very useful one. We can change the operating mode, whether it's on, off, bi-level, tri-level, or dimming. We can, we can select override. To me, this is one of the real key features of the new DLM daylighting sensors, is we now have the ability to let you, as the user, decide how you want override. Our basic premise was the user should always have the ability to save more energy, okay? If you want to use less light than what the photo cell is commanding, great, we'll let you do it all day long. If you want to use more light, well, you got to ask permission. The system was designed to have daylight harvesting. If you're going to override it, you have to make a conscious decision, and you'll get permission using the LMCT100. You see how powerful this is? You have to have these things. They're awesome. Okay. So if you decide that you want to be able to override the light level set by your daylight photo cell, we're not going to let you do it forever. You'll have to pick one hour, two hour, three hour, four hours. In any event, if you leave your room, your space, and the occupancy sensor times out and turns the lights off, when you come back in, daylighting's active again. We're not going to let it go on indefinitely, okay? You'll also be able to alter your set points. Once you've commissioned, if you think the lights are turning off or dimming down too soon, you can just go and alter a set point using the configuration tool and set your time delays. Time delays are really important. You know, if, if the sun goes down and you need more light, we need it now. But if the sun comes up and we've got plenty of light, well, we don't need to do it right now. And so the time delay will, you can set a time delay so that if a cloud comes over for five minutes, Maybe you don't want your lights to turn off. So you set a time delay for 15 minutes that says, you have to see a change in the light lower for 15 minutes before any action takes place. And then again, the fade times. And since I'm a dimming guy, I'm just huge into separate on and off, up and down fade times. The photo cells have that ability. Um, I kind of went into it, you know, that when you need more light, you need it now. Do it over a five second fade. When you've got plenty of light, do it over 60 seconds so nobody notices it. Okay, because to me, we shouldn't see the daylight harvesting. We should just be getting the benefits from it. It shouldn't be a distraction. So what are the takeaways from this for watt stoppers, digital lighting management, dimming and daylighting? Well, to me, the most important things that I'd like to leave you with, it's energy efficient. The whole goal of this is energy efficiency. And although we've built a lot of architectural dimming features into the dimming products, they all adhere to plug and go, to push and learn. They all default to the most energy efficient sequence of operation, just like all the other products. It's very flexible. 
there are so many things you can do with this. There's, I mean, as you saw in the keypad, there's a number of different ways to accomplish your design. We've got a lot of different room controllers. You can do switching, you can do dimming. Um, on the dimming, you can have big loads, you can have three smaller loads. There, there's just a lot of flexibility built in here. It's scalable. Just build up as big as you want to go, okay? And you don't have to replace parts. It's fully integrated. This is not an add-on. This is uh, at the heart of digital lighting management. It was designed around dimming and daylighting being a key criteria, and it's very intelligent, okay? So that's what I've got for you. Thank you very much. And as you can see, there's a world between on and off. Thanks.